Jefferson County ranked third in the state in 3A, trying to make it five straight wins to start the season tonight against Westside. First quarter, no score. Jefferson County driving. Jaron McKenney takes the ball on a fly sweeper on the right side, picks up 11 yards and a first down. Later in the drive, it's going to be Jimmy Thomas taking it up the middle, and he goes untouched into the end zone for the touchdown, 7 nothing. Jeff Go. Jefferson County driving again. This time, QB. C.J. Hales finds Justin Davis, and he takes it down to the 15-yard line later in the drive. Jenkins drops back to pass. He gets hit but stays on his feet, finds Nickel Stone open in the end zone for the touchdown. Jefferson County all over west side in this one, 48-0. They're 5-0. You're watching Football Friday Night. Football Friday Night is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Nissan, innovation that excites. Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust, doing the right thing. Augusta Technical College, smart people, smart choices. Great deals on furniture. The deals are here, the deals are now. Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. Your CSRA Chevy dealers, Chevrolet, finds new roads, and Justin's Georgia Campus Services, celebrating moments that matter since 1897. Now, the leader in local high school football coverage, WJBF Sports brings you Football Friday Night. Hello and welcome to week six of Football Friday Night alongside Nathan Palm. I am Mad Zom. We're already halfway through the regular season. Yeah, just six more games left for Game Night Live. We'll get to tonight's big South Carolina showdown a little bit later. Yeah, what a game that was. But first, one of the most impressive teams in the area for this first half of the year. The Greenbrier Wolfpack off to their first 4-0 start since 1997, trying for 5-0 tonight. They've only won five games in a season one time since 2003. Wolfback hosting their old 5A region rival Cross Creek tonight. Razorbacks off to a 3-1 start, but down 7-0 to start the second half. Devin Hicks will take matters into his own hands. First one way, then the other. Weaves his way through traffic and a tightrope down the sideline. He's in for six. This game's tied at seven. That seemed to wake Greenbrier up. On their next possession, this is Hayden Harrison coming into your living room and in for six. It's 14-7 Wolfpack. After a Razorback, three and out, the Pack go back to work. This time, it's John Waters. Another touchdown, and Greenbrier extends the lead to 21-7. Still in the third quarter, John Cuevas Brown, they call him JQ, adds to his 400-plus rushing yards this season with about a 20-yard touchdown run here. Greenbrier puts up 21 unanswered in the third. They win 35-7, and the Wolfpack are 5-0. and oh. Grovetown and ARC were in that same 5A region last year. This a final non-region tune-up tonight. Late first half, Grovetown trailing 7-0. Taylor Youngblood fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. He's in for the touchdown. Warriors tie this one up at 7. ARC trying to get something going before the halftime break. On the little inside reverse, watch this run by Clyde Dell White. Cuts it back inside and then weaves his way all the way to the other side of the field. Nice gain sets up ARC in business trying to get a late score. But on the next play, it's a fumble. Grovetown recovers, and Grovetown gets a one-point win, 14-13 the final. In Columbia County, Evans trying to finish non-region play at 3-2, hosting Baldwin and moving the ball early. This is Corey Watkins with a nice move to get the Knights into the red zone. Then. After he finally gets down, tough yardage. Watkins is going to get a chance to finish what he started, and he does around the outside and into the end zone untouched. But Evans, or Evans does go on to win 21 to 6 over Baldwin at Lakeside. The Panthers still looking for their first win of the season, hosting 3-0 Richmond Hill, led by former finest co coach Matt Lazo. Panthers facing an uphill climb already down 21 0 in the second. Nick Reed. Getting some going on the outside, about a 20-yard pickup there to move the chains, but yards were tough to come by. That drive would end in a missed field goal. Then just before the half, half Panthers throw up a prayer, and it ends up in the wrong hands. Lakeside still seeking that first win. They fall 34 to six tonight. Well, Josie made the playoffs last year in 3A down in a bigger region in 2A this year. Yeah, an eight-team region still only four make the playoffs, but the Eagles off to a 
1-0 start, trying for back-to-back -back region wins tonight against Glen Hill. Spartan, Spartans up a touchdown close to half, but Josie quarterback Ja'Kael Flewellen bombs one downfield for Cornell Clark. He hauls it in, but it gets called back on a holding penalty one of those nights for Josie. It'd get worse for the Eagles on that drive. Block punt in the end zone, touchdown Glen Hill. Spartans up 14 a couple minutes before half. Stingy D from Glen Hills all night as they pick up their second win of the season. First region victory. D. D Alexander McGee here on the sack. Spartans win this one 21-14. At Harlem, it's the Battle of the Bulldogs. Harlem trying to go 2-0 in region play, taking on Butler. Third quarter tied at 14. Harlem running back L.J. Williams, a tough run around the outside, deep inside Butler territory. Later in the drive, quarterback Lane Phillips takes it in from two yards out, and Harlem leads this one 21 to 14. We move to the fourth quarter. Butler driving big number five. Keon Lassane takes it around the right, down the right sideline. Going to get face mask on the play, but still picks up big yardage. Now third and goal from the 12. Davis Cheek scrambles and finds Demel Hickman in the end zone, and that is a touchdown. The extra point fails. Butler, though, comes back and gets the win 26 21. All right, unbeaten Burke County up to number seven, ranking in Georgia in 4A, hosting Effingham County in their final non region tune up. Effingham's Jared Stokes to DeMonte Lee for an Effingham first down, but Burke, they started strong. Jalen Odom, he fumbles, but it is recovered by Cameron Holmes, so not strong quite yet, but let's go to the next play. Burke County's Cameron Holmes runs it in for a five yard touchdown. Burke takes a 7 0 lead over Effingham. First quarter still, Burke. William Knight throws downfield to Dallas Rogers and holds on to it. Nice catch by him. And then William Knight fights in for the Bears' touchdown. They'd go up 14-0, but Burke would give it up to Effingham. They come back to take down the Bears 28-21. Good matchup down in Macon tonight. Lincoln County taking on Stratford Academy. Tidarius Elam on the return for the Red Devils along the far sideline, breaking tackles as he crosses into Stratford territory. And then, later on that drive, it's a QB sneak. Javon Reed punches it into the end zone, and Lincoln County is on the board. Stratford would capitalize on a botched punt, on a snap on the punt and a fumble from Lincoln County, though. But then Javon Reed hits Quintavious right on the outside. He beats the defender, goes the distance. Unfortunately, they fall to Stratford 35-19 tonight. Well, more to come here tonight on Football Friday Night. Yeah, busy night on the South Carolina side, including that thriller on Game Night Live between North Augusta and Strom Thurman. We'll get to that one in just a little bit. But first, some key early season showdowns and an intriguing non-region matchup between Midland Valley and Fox Creek. That one at Lions Memorial Field in North Augusta. We'll have highlights from there and much, much more next on FFN. We have Supporting high school athletics, McDonald's, proud sponsor of football Friday night. 